one of the films screening as part of Monster Fest next month here in Melbourne is a film called Crow Valley. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the writer, director, lead actor of uh, Crow Valley. Uh, and I should also mention uh, some more roles as well, sound design and so on, uh, music. Uh, Josh Conn, Josh, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Now, this is quite an effective thriller. Tell me about the inspiration behind you making this film, because I gather it's your first film. Yeah, it was, um, I guess I was looking for something that was manageable. So the story kind of came out of really things that I could achieve. So it was um, a little strategic in that it was a uh, two-hander, one location. So... While I was writing, obviously the ideas developed and you want to get those thematic layers in there and the material that makes things interesting. So over uh, the script actually took quite a while to write. I think I spent nearly 12 months on it and um, and then we got to shooting. So, and yeah, and we ended up with Crow Valley. So we're pretty happy with it. And there it is. And as I said, it's quite an effective thriller with uh, um, some twists and turns in, in the storyline. And as you say, it took you a while to develop it. Um, how easy was it for you to be able to make the film? Because considering uh, getting financing and, and produ production behind you is never easy. Peter, it was, um, put simply, really, 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 really hard to make the movie. It was, um, it was, it, it took a long time to make. We we had a really small crew and it was a lot of friends and family who helped out. So it was a really small production. Um, but it was a joy because so many people who were involved were good friends or my uncle came one day and helped and my mum came another day and helped and all, all types of crazy stuff like that. I guess, you know, with that in mind, we're really happy with the end result. I think we came up with something that was pretty effective. The story's quite good. And it does have some scenes that I'm really proud of that have a real intensity and a great emotional moment. So obviously you have those things that you wish were better, but we're very happy with how it all came together. And, and tell me about how you choreographed some of those scenes, because uh, there are quite intense uh, scenes in the film, knives everywhere and all sorts of things going on with you and Nicole. <laughs> tell me about that, because yeah. that must have been quite, quite risky at times. <laughs> the, the, the tricky thing was, um, I don't want to give too much away, but we did, obviously with the knife stuff, we had uh this fake knife and the tricky thing with the fake knife was it was quite rubbery and bendy so there was a lot of editing that went on and shots that had to be removed where the knife looked quite bendy but um th those those scenes take a lot of work and a, a lot of shots you, you're referring to there's a particular scene in the movie where the two main characters really come into conflict and they're actually fighting with knives and that type of thing and that took a Compared to a normal scene where you've got your, you know, basic coverage, that took a long time to shoot because we were, you know, we broke it down into particular shots and storyboarded all those shots and how they were going to go together and then choreographed it more on the day because what happens is you get in there and you find out, oh, this doesn't work or that doesn't work or what we thought would work was never going to work. So, um, yeah, they do take a lot of work. But the, the benefits, you know, to the whole story are there. So, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I, I'm intrigued by the use of locations because uh, I, I noticed early on there's a scene near Luna Park there in, in St Kilda and, uh, <laughs> and then I, is the rest of it in the Dandenongs? No, um, we shot most of it um, in Aries Inlet. So we had um, the cabin itself, the interior was in Aries, in Aries Inlet, and the exterior was in Dalesford. And then a lot of the exterior shots that you see were shot kind of along the surf coast. So some parts were in the Otways. There's a beautiful, one of the early scenes, there's a beautiful, it's called the Air River Valley. 
and we shot, we spent a day down there and that was just such a nice day because we got down there really early and it was just mist everywhere and it's such a beautiful location as you see in the movie. So that was really fun to shoot there. And um, some of the other locations were around areas inlet in the bush and that type of thing. So it was, and I love shooting in those exterior locations. It's so nice to be out and about, although I will say, it's so much easier to shoot, you know, when we were in the cabin and we could control the lighting and what was happening and the weather and the rain, you know, we were nice and dry. Oh, well, not really because we were covered in blood a lot, but, you know, it's much easier to shoot indoors, obviously, but there were some really nice locations. Okay. And tell me about casting, apart from yourself, uh, uh, in terms of the uh, other actors involved, in particular Nicole, and I noticed uh, Jessica is in there as well, and... Uh, and a few other people. How did you uh, make those decisions? Well, um, Nicole, I had worked with on a short film and I talked with her quite a bit because it was, we shot it over two years and she was quite young when she came on board. Like, she, how old would she have been? Like maybe just 19. And it was a huge amount of time for her and a huge commitment. And then we shot it, it took us nearly two years because of, I think we shot the last little bit because we had a big COVID break and then we got a little bit of time where we could finish it off. So by the time we finished shooting it, you know, two years had passed, which when you're that age, like early 20s, that's such a long amount of time. So she was so great in how professional she was. Actually, she blew me away because when I was that age, I was just running around with my pants on fire. I didn't know which way was up. And her kind of level of commitment and maturity and an ability just to get to work. She's got such a work ethic. It was amazing. So, yep, she was an absolute masterstroke. She was such, such a key part of the success of the movie and also being able to finish it. Um, Jess Leeming was, she's so cool. She came in and actually helped direct a couple of the cabin scenes when we, we just needed another person kind of to give us a bit of perspective on it because we've been doing it for so long. So she was fantastic in coming doing that. And she also, oh, I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, she did some hard yards as far as what she, she had to do. And then Peter Murray, who is a, um, a counsellor here in Geelong, um, is the nicest bloke in the world. So he was found by Nicole actually because they were friends through other acting jobs. And um, he was an absolute trooper. He lied in a pool of blood for the best part of a day and um, just was happy to do it and didn't complain. And we would kept saying, Peter, you okay? Is everything all right? And he goes, no, nope, fine, just keep going, mate. It's all good. So he was, he was lovely to work with too. We were actually really, really lucky in that, I can honestly say everyone who helped out in the movie was awesome and a, you know, great fun to be around and we didn't have any conflict or anything like that. So it was, that made it a really nice experience as well. Okay. And it must have been tough for you because you have multiple roles, obviously being the writer, the director, uh, sound design, you're the editor. I didn't, I will, sorry, sound design was done by Craig Jansen because ah. sound, sorry about that, Peter. Um, yeah, he, because sound is a, is a strange black art that only few magicians can do. And Craig is one of those special magicians and he did a great job. But um, really the, the multi hyphenate lots of jobs thing came about through desperation really and a lack of money. And I did have a model that I was working on production wise. There was, um, there's a US director named Jeremy Solnier who did a couple of fantastic movies called Blue Ruin and Green Room. And he basically produced a movie in a very similar fashion. So we kind of used him as a model and um, just took our time and made mistakes and tried our best and got there in the end. But it must be so interesting to direct yourself uh, in those uh, in those uh, pretty tough scenes on occasion, especially uh, with on the bike early on, which uh, I noticed was very carefully choreographed. Yeah, the um, the hardest thing was, as I mentioned, with Jess um, getting her in some of the cabin scenes that were quite intense. It was nice to have that third person. We were we were pretty collaborative. I mean. 
I was the director, but we'd all sit around and kind of go, did that work? Was that good? What do you think, Nicole? Oh, maybe we could do this. And then Adrian Olsen, who was our DP, he's a mate of mine and we would, you know, what do you think? Adrian, he'd go, well, we could do this or that. So it was very collaborative and um, it, it wasn't um, some, you know, directorial mastermind. It was, it was more a, a team of people just really working together to get the best out of something. I think that was another part of it that was really fun too, was that we were able to kind of work as a real team and, um, yeah, get, get it to the best possible level we could. Okay. Well, well done on that, because uh, um, uh, it, it does work uh, very well. It's, I, as I was watching it, I was thinking, hello, there are some echoes from other films here, which, of course, uh, there will always be in these sorts of thrillers. I was thinking of Misery, and I was thinking of mm -hmm. uh, a whole range of other films. Did you use any particular films or, or filmmakers as inspirations? I, I I've obviously love things with intensity, so... Paul Thomas Anderson is a particular favourite. I'm a huge fan of There Will Be Blood. And that wasn't necessarily a, a story uh, inspiration, but it was definitely as far as, you know, filmmaking chops, he was a huge inspiration. But I have quite broad tastes, so I, I tend to kind of be a bit of a magpie and pick and, as so many people do, inspiration from, from here and there. But... I guess from a, a pure filmmaking point of view, I was really keen to make sure that it had that extra layer that was thematically rich. So, you know, we ask questions, even though there's a lot of chasing and knives and blood and, you know, stabbing and pain and hammer hitting and all that type of stuff, we, we try to ask questions about, you know, guilt and how it affects people and empathy and how people can who have you know huge amounts of conflict and sit on very different parts of a spectrum in an argument can come to an understanding so that was something we tried to tackle um and was something that these days that that sense of empathy is 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 kind of such a hot button issue because people in the you know the twitterverse and online seem to so quickly get into an arms race of fury and empathy is a really um, interesting thing to talk about in that climate i think so we were happy to try and ask a few questions about that but also make it you know a thrill ride and all the the fun stuff in there as well that these thrillers and genre movies have Okay, well, well done on that. <laughs> now, it's, uh, you must be very pleased that the film is screening next month at Monster Fest. Yeah, it's, we're really excited. Um, I don't think there's many tickets left now, but we, it's, um, that's, that was a huge boost. We're really happy that Grant and the team um, decided to add us to the lineup. It's a really strong lineup, and um, obviously, our movie is quite a small budget movie, but um, so it's hugely exciting to be a part of that. We've also, um, on the back of that next year, early next year, we managed to secure a release for the US and also for the UK. So that's a, a really big plus for the movie and has been a huge boost as far as the prospects for the movie and finding an audience as well, because obviously the audience over there is, you know, there's just so many more people. And um, also we'll be releasing on um, YouTube movies and Google Play here in Australia post the festival, which our night is on December 11th. And then in January, we'll be um, kind of releasing it on those types of um, video on demand services. So it'll be nice to, um, yeah, get some eyeballs looking at it finally. It's um, been kind of a long time in gestation, so it's, and not many people have seen it. I mean, you, you saw it and, you know, you probably are one of only a handful. Lots of people know about it now, so it would be really nice to see it on the big screen and see it with a bunch of people and see if it scares them. I'm sure it will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell me, Josh, are you working on another film at the moment? Um, I've just started kind of gathering ideas. I, I, there's, I've had a 
kind of, I've been working through a huge range of ideas and obviously you're juggling what's manageable and what's interesting to do. Um, I've got this very strange idea involving sword and sorcery, which is such a weird thing, but we've got some ideas. I've got some ideas about how to do it and how to do it in an interesting way. And I've got a, I actually had a bit of a breakthrough the other day because I've been writing the script and I had a, I kind of a breakthrough about the core relationship and how that would work. And it went from being kind of quite a strange action movie to something that might be really interesting and engaging. So pretty excited about that. And I'll keep on working on my crazy sword and sorcery idea and see how it comes. To <laughs> see what happens with that. Very good. Yeah. I'm always intrigued. What was it that inspired you to be a filmmaker in the first place? Movies. I love movies. I'm, I'm sure, like you, Peter, it's um, they're so good. When they're so good, they're, they're such a fulfilling experience. Um, and yeah, when you see a good movie, it, it was, ever since I was a kid, I just it was you know one of those great experiences because I was I'm obviously watching my kids now. They have such this rich life of imagination I was exactly the same when I was a kid so if I watched a movie I was just swept away by it and I still am when I see a movie so and I think I just got to the point where it's like I want to make them I think I want to make movies and because I grew up in country town so it was always this impossible thing you just couldn't do it and then the whole digital revolution started and suddenly you didn't need a million dollars to buy film stock anymore you could go out and have a bash and um, I did and here we are. So, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I guess what happens is it was interesting because I wanted to make this movie and I thought, I'll just make this movie. I just want to make a feature and then that'll be it and I'll be fine. I'll be happy. And then I made this and I'm, it's like, oh, I want to make another, <laughs> I want to make another one. I think I want to make 10 and then I'll retire just like Quentin Tarantino perhaps. But <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And it's great to see. I, actually read a quote from Steven Spielberg the other day and I completely agree with it. It's amazing to see your stories, your these dreams that you come up with in your head and you make them into this real thing. And it's, it's a complete magic trick, but it's so satisfying from a creative point of view. And um, yeah, that's the real thrill. It's that seeing your imagination come to life. It's awesome. That's terrific. The magic of the movies. I fully agree yeah. with you. <laughs> and, and just to conclude, uh, Josh, have you seen anything lately uh, in cinemas, on streaming, anywhere that has impressed you? Oh, I get impressed. I'm really quite easily impressed by so much stuff. And there's so much great stuff around. I've been watching Succession, which is some fantastic acting. But then I watched uh, uh, Finch online which is a new tom hanks post-apocalyptic thing and that was um that was a real surprise but maybe not so much because tom hanks is a movie star and, or you know you get a performance no matter what so that was great um what else have i seen they're the two things that really come to mind that's you know brand new but um yeah there's so much around it's exciting keen to see june that'll be my first foray back to the cinemas um so I'll check that out and that's exciting to be able to see that on the big screen. Exactly. I mean, there's such a massive backlog of films now that uh, mm. are ready to be released in Melbourne. So, yeah, great. Look, we'll have one more. Sorry, Peter, can I add one more? Please. Very quick. I watch it because I do a bit of historic, um, you know, going back and watching the classics and I watched The Seventh Seal for the first time, Ingmar Bergman. Uh -huh. And it's some, I thought, okay, this is film homework. It'll be, you know, I'll, I'll enjoy it. Hopefully it was awesome. So do yourself a favour. Not art house, just awesome movie. So, yeah. Bergman stuff is just fantastic. I agree with you. <laughs> and I also can recommend Crow Valley. And we've been speaking to the writer-director of Crow Valley, Josh Conn, and his film screening next month at Monster Fest. Josh, thanks so much for talking with me. Thanks, Peter. Bye.